Okay guys, hello, welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be starting completely from scratch, starting with a rock, and we are going to go from rock to base. So this is going to be a completely, you know, dumbed down tutorial for the new beginner players in Rust because I know as well as anyone that this game can be really difficult. And even as someone with a lot of experience in Rust, I still struggle from time to time. So I can't, I can't even imagine or really remember what it was like as a completely new player in this game. So I'm talking, if you've just bought this game and you want to know how to get started, then this is the video for you. So let's get right into it. Let's get going. Essentially, when you wake up on the beach, you have nothing. You have a rock and a torch and some underwear by the looks of it. Speaking of which, they literally gave me the ugliest, <laughs> the ugliest avatar that they possibly could have given me. So thanks for that, face punch. But anyway, that's not what's important here. What's important is trying to make a little base and uh, trying to do it efficiently with minimal stress. So what I would recommend is when you first wake up on the beach, what you want to do is you want to look at look at the map, find out whereabouts you've spawned. Generally, the new spawns or the fresh spawns, as they call them, are going to spawn in the grassy areas. So it's pretty rare that you ever spawn slash I don't think that you spawn in the in the snow or the desert regions. And what you find is that the further away from the fresh spawn area that you go, so in this map, for example, as I start to travel west, it's going to get more and more uh, busy. There's going to be more and more larger bases. We want to get away from this uh, fresh spawn area. And so you, you can expect that as you start to run across the map, you're probably going to find more clans, more people with guns. Occasionally, you get the big bases building you know, on the coastal regions where the fresh spawns are, but they're generally douchebags who want to try and kill people who have just spawned into the game. And that is a, that's an exception, not a rule, generally, generally speaking. So keep in mind that I have never played this map before. I have no blueprints. I have nothing except for the 50 wood that I just picked up. So what I would generally do is find a place that, that I want to look at building in or near for today to keep it somewhat simple. I'm gonna build, you know, around, maybe around here, around the top near dome and harbor. And over time, you know, initially when Rust first came out, it was a very grindy game. So you would spawn in, you'd have to run around, hit a bunch of rocks and, and trees and gradually build up your resources. It's kind of changed. So what they've done is they've tried to make the game, oh, I'm getting radiation there. <laughs> Lots of radiation. They've tried to make the game less grindy for that reason. And so what you can do these days is you can simply run around. You can farm a bunch of uh, components from barrels. You can find things in these little boxes. So a bit of food and some pickles <laughs> and some pickles. Uh, and then from there, you can recycle these items to give you metal frags and wood and stone. Well, not stone, but you can trade for stone. So I'll show you all these things today. So this is a recycler. Pretty much if I had anything to recycle, I don't know if you can recycle bean can. Let's see. Yeah, nice. So you can. So you can, you can recycle pretty much every component and a bunch of other things as well. And that is a great way to get started rather than running around and trying to hit a bunch of nodes and trees. So what I would do as a new player is I would simply run along the road, hitting barrels along the way, collecting items from the boxes that spawn alongside the road. And that radiation is really, really causing me some trouble. You can also pick up these free little resources on the ground. So you can find that in the form of wood, stone, sulfur, metal ore. And yeah, so the, so the roads are generally where you'll find most of the components. You can find them in other areas, like under the uh, telephone wires, but generally they're, they're gonna spawn next to the road. So this is a, an example of a some free sulfur on the ground. Keep in mind as well that you know, there, there's a lot to this game, so I'm just going to be telling you guys the basics. So in, in future videos, we'll cover some more specifics, but for today, we're talking about simply, you know, getting started, getting a base down. 
Unless you have clothing, I would stay away from the monuments, you know, like train yard here or the dome because you get radiation poisoning and that will kill you. And the purpose of today is not to die to radiation, it's to get a base down. And you know, over time, you'll pick up little, little tricks and tips of your own in terms of how to expedite the process. All right, so we hit some barrels. And we'll loot some boxes. Oh man, double barrel? Hell yeah. So that's why you that's why you loot on the road. So there's a guy there, so I'm gonna run away from him. Although I could try and double barrel him actually. Fuck off, dude. Okay, so we'll get away from that situation. Keep in mind that as you're trying to start out in Rust, it's pretty common to die a number of times. Sometimes you get lucky and you have a great run at the start, and you can get a base down. But more often than not, holy, holy. But yeah, more often than not, it's going to take you a number of attempts to get started. And also keep in mind that because every time you're probably going to spawn in a similar kind of area, as you get closer to whereabouts you want to build. So for today, we're going to say, you know, over like here, this is going to be our, our spot that we want to build around here somewhere. As I get closer to that area, I want to make sure that I try and get down a sleeping bag. So a sleeping bag is what is going to allow you to respawn in a particular area. To craft a sleeping bag, you need 100 wood and 30 cloth. How do you get wood? You can chop it. And how do you get cloth? You can either pick up hemp. So the little hemp bushes that you see on the ground, you tend to find them only in the grassy or snow areas. You don't find them in the, in the uh, desert regions. In the desert, you can get hemp by hitting cactuses or cacti. That's a pretty slow way to get it. Uh, and the other way that you can get it is by recycling. So for example, this tarp that I have, if I put that into a recycler, it's gonna give me 50 cloth. And that's more than enough to get a, a sleeping bag. So let's keep moving. I think for now, I'm gonna use, use this cloth to make some bandages so I can heal, heal up a bit. And as we go, I will show you guys what the different types of ore nodes are that you need to be familiar with. And I'll also teach you how to farm them to give you the necessary resources to get started in this game. But like I said, you can, you can get a lot of resources by hitting barrels, recycling, and trading. So we have three different types of ore nodes. This one here is a stone node because of the, the whitish sort of grayish color. I'm not going to farm it there because it's quite loud to do so and there's some bases around so I don't want to draw any attention at the moment. So this node here is an example of a sulfur node because it's got that yellowy tinge to it. And then this one here, or these two, are examples of metal ore nodes. So they're the ones that you farm uh, to wind up with metal frags once they're cooked up. Now how are we going in terms of the map? Okay, we've come a little bit too far south so we're going to start heading back towards the road a bit. See if we can find some hemp to pick. Also, the best places to recycle your components that you pick up on the road. Uh, generally, um, you know, harbor is a place that you can go without getting radiation and there's a recycler there. Otherwise, you want to look for the little uh, mining outposts around the map. So either, you know, Oxum's gas station is one example. You can see here there's like a mining outpost, so there's a recycler there. Uh, also, bandit camp is a great place to recycle. Keep in mind that you need to have all your weapons unequipped when you head into bandit camp or you will be killed. And the other place similar to that is outpost. So make sure that you have your weapons unequipped and you can recycle components at the outpost. In terms of farming, there's two different types of, or two primary types of tools that you use for farming resources. There are hatchets or there are pickaxes. And I guess it goes without saying that the, the hatchets are used to get wood and the pickaxe is used to get ore from nodes. If you try and hit a, a node with a hatchet, nothing happens. If you use a pickaxe, you'll start to gather stone. Also, during the daylight hours on the ore nodes, there'll be these little sparkly bits. If you hit those, you'll make that nice little sound and that will allow you to farm the node faster than if you were to hit it in another area.
similar type of thing for wood. Once you hit it, it will come up with a little X. Hit the X and you will simply farm it a bit faster. Okay, how's everyone doing? There's a lot to learn, man. There is a lot to learn in this game. This is an example of a sleeping bag, so someone's put that down and when they die, they can choose to respawn there. There is a dude up the hill there that I'm gonna try and stay away from if I can. Some more stone nodes there. Let's keep moving. Here's an example of hemp. So if I pick this, I get 10 cloth. So do I have enough cloth to put down a sleeping bag? I don't, I've only got 12. Okay, how are we looking on the old the old map? Oof, we've come <laughs> we've come a far way south. I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter where I build. And there's lots of there's actually lots of nodes up here and lots of trees. As a beginner player in this game, what I'd probably recommend is trying to build towards the outskirts of the map. Uh, if you build right in the center, like you, you want to think about if if there's a big big base or a big clan, they're going to be traveling between all the monuments pretty regularly. And what you want to do is you want to minimize the amount of people who know where you live. So by building on the outskirts of the map, you can, you know, you minimize the amount of traffic that goes past your base. And as a result, you essentially minimize the amount of danger <laughs> or threat that you're exposed to. Okay, I think we're just going to whack down a little base. Uh, so I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. Yeah, somewhere around here. So there's actually... There's quite a few components here underneath the, the telephone wires and it's pretty close to a big monument which is nice it's near the coast so we're not going to have too much traffic coming past and there's quite a few resources so this is a good little area let's find a place that is kind of concealed if we can so for me because there's a big base up the road there i'd probably be pushing around a little bit further to the north maybe hidden in between these rocks could be a nice spot Okay, so right here is not a bad little spot. It's not bad. So what do we need to get a base down? So you need to build a building plan. This will allow you to put foundations down and to build the walls of your base out of twig. You will need a hammer to upgrade walls and foundations and to rotate walls as well. You will also need a door and a code lock or a uh, key lock. Okay, so with my Building plan equipped, we're going to put down a little 2x2 uh, two two base, which is, I think, is the perfect size for a starter base. Or it, it's probably even big enough that as a solo player, or even a duo player, you could expand that into a into a base that you can keep for the entire wipe, if you just put some honeycombing around the side to make it a bit more secure. So I would start off with a 2x2 two two kind of base, and then make sure you have a little triangle which is going to be your airlock because the last thing you want is to have one door between you and your enemies because they could just sit there with a shotgun and as soon as you open your door you're toast okay so we'll put a uh, two doorways on two doorways and then we'll put walls here and then we'll fill it in with uh with the roof One thing that you always want to do is make sure that you're building from the inside of your base because that way you can be sure that the walls of your base are facing the right way. If you build from the outside, then the walls are going to be backwards. And yes, it does matter which way your walls are facing because if you have wooden walls, for example, or even stone walls, if, if they're facing the wrong way, then people can use hatchets and pickaxes to destroy them pretty easily. This is essentially what we're looking at. We're going to make another door and another key lock because that's going to be our little airlock in the middle here. And then hopefully we have enough resources, stone and wood, to upgrade this thing completely. I'm not sure that we do, but we'll see how we go. So with the hammer, you can upgrade. So we'll upgrade that to wood. Make sure that every single piece of twig is upgraded because if it's not, then that poses a big vulnerability to the structure and people can can get in so easily so easily like they could be in here within five seconds okay let's uh let's whack this little fire fire down so we can see what we're doing i would recommend not doing this <laughs> generally because it draws a lot of attention but for the sake of the video we're gonna hope for the best And 
Now, where are our key locks? <laughs> That's the next question. Here they are. So we'll whack those on. Make sure that we lock the door. Whack that on, lock the door. Okay. So there you have it. We have a, a basic little base down, but we're not quite done yet because we currently do not have any building privilege here. So without building privilege, essentially that means that anyone, anyone and their dog can run along and decide to put another airlock and a door on the front and you will be trapped in your base for eternity. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to make a tool cupboard. A tool cupboard is gonna cost you a thousand wood and you also wanna put a, a lock on your tool cupboard. But anyway, let's, uh, let's farm up a thousand wood Okay, that's going to be plenty. Head back to our little base, our cute little wooden base. And then we want to craft ourselves a tool cupboard. So placing a tool cupboard gives you exclusive building rights for a 50 meter radius. So for other players to be able to build in this area, they will need to get access to your tool cupboard and authorize themselves on it. You can avoid that by making sure that your tool cupboard is in the most secure part of your base and also by putting a lock on it. So the only way that they can get access to it is by destroying it, which is not super hard to do, but they need a flamethrower or like certain items in the game to be able to destroy it. And now we can whack down a tool cupboard. I would recommend putting it as deep into the corner as you possibly can. There's someone outside, so I should get this down as quick as possible. Not bad. And then I'd also put a, a key lock on that as well. So key locks are completely fine to use as a solo player. If you decide that you want to bring anyone else into the base, then you're going to want to make code locks so that multiple people can have access to the same doors at the same time. Unless you want to be like the door boy and stand here and open and close the door for everyone who wants to enter and exit the base. I need to authorize, so press X on this. It will give me access to the tool cupboard. And then you can see up in the top right corner, it gives me some base statistics. To make sure that my base doesn't decay and erode over time, you need to make sure that you have certain items inside the tool cupboard. So for my base, which is purely made of stone and wood, all I need in the tool cupboard is stone and wood. I need 308 wood and 186 stone to upkeep this base for an entire day. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold X to put everything that can possibly go in into the tool cupboard. And you can see here that my base will be protected for 23 hours and 48 minutes. The more that you put in, the longer that your base is going to be safe for in terms of decay. Finally, you wanna make sure that you craft some boxes so that you can store your loot. I will make another video going through the best starter base design, in my opinion, for solos and duos. But for now, you guys can just have some fun, you know, whack down a few little bits and pieces. The other things that I need in this base to get, really get started are a small furnace or a few furnaces and also a sleeping bag. You always should have a sleeping bag inside your base and furnaces are really important to get early on so that you can start to smelt your metal ore and your sulfur ore. To make a small furnace, you need 200 stone, 100 wood, and 50 low-grade fuel. So stone and wood are easy, you know how to get those. Low-grade fuel, to craft low-grade, what you need is cloth and animal fat. So you need three animal fat and one cloth, and that will make you about four low-grade, I think. Where do you get animal fat? From animals, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to make myself a little box so that I can store a few things. And then we'll go out and see if we can kill an animal, and I'll show you how these small furnaces work. Okay, so in terms of getting a small furnace, the original way to do this is to kill animals. The easiest way to kill animals is to craft yourselves a bow and arrow. So what I've done is I've hit a bunch of cacti to give me enough cloth. You need 50 cloth to make a bow and you also need 200 wood. So we should be able to craft a bow now, hunting bow. And then to make the arrows, you need wood and stone. So we'll take a little bit of stone out of the tool cupboard and we'll make like 40 arrows, which is plenty. And then we just need to go find an animal. Okay, so we got a little piggy over here. Okay, so from the pig, we'll be able to farm some animal fat. Just a little tip here. As soon as you get enough resources, 
what you want to do is make yourself a bone knife. You generally get a bit more from farming animals with a bone knife than you do by using like a hatchet or a rock. So now that we have cloth and animal fat, you can see here, if we go into our invent, we'll be able to craft low grade fuel. So I'm going to craft as much of that as I can. And then we'll head back to base and I'll show you guys how to make a small furnace and how to get it started. That should hopefully be enough to get you guys started in the cruel, cruel world that is rust. So we're going to borrow a bit of wood and a bit of stone from the old tool cupboard. And then with our newly acquired low grade fuel that is still crafting at the moment, we can make ourselves a small furnace. So let's get that one crafting. That's going to take us 30 seconds. All right, we have our, our little furnace here. We're going to whack that down right in the corner over here. Nice. So in your furnace, you want to put your wood and then also you want to put in, first of all, we're going to make some metal frags. So we're going to cook up this metal ore. As you can see, if you, uh, if you just turn it on like this with 600 uh, metal ore in the furnace, you can see that every now and then you're going to get one metal fragment cooked. A good little tip is to divide the ore into three. So 200 a piece. And then when you turn the furnace on, you'll see that rather than one metal fragment at a time, you are going to get yourself three metal fragments. So you can just let that cook away and you can, you know, go make a coffee or something because what you want to do is when this is cooked enough, the next most important thing is to try and put a sheet metal door on your base, which is going to cost 150 metal frags. So we'll have more than enough once this finishes cooking up and there you go. And that's pretty much all you guys need to know for how to get started on your first day in Rust on console. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to post them in the comments section and I'll happily help you guys out. Like I said, getting started in Rust is really hard and I can empathize with you guys. <laughs> so good luck out there. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future videos. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.